Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Be Yourself. This is Dr. Rajin Sharma and today I am going to deal with endoplasmic reticulum. It is one of the organelles of the cell which play a very important role in the protein synthesis as well as proper translocations and it also go, undergoes some uh, modifications, protein undergo glycosylations and proper folding inside the endoplasmic reticulum. So let's see how uh, what it is and how it functions basically in the protein transportation or translocation to its correct site. Endoplasmic reticulum is a network of cristae, tubules and vesicles which is present in all eukaryotes. And it was first discovered by Potter and Thompson under electron microscope. I have told that it is present in all the eukaryotes, but actually there are certain exceptions like in mature uh, eukaryotes, uh, erythrocytes or RBCs, of one early embryonic cells and resting cells don't have endoplasmic reticulum because there is no requirement of endoplasmic reticulum uh, in uh, this cell. So it uh, better it eliminate all these organelles for its uh, basic functioning. For example, the RPCs which basically employed for the oxygen transportation and endoplasmic reticulum is a very large organelle. It will occupy most of the space of the cells in the RPCs. So, uh, and it is present uh, during the immature case of RPCs, but on maturations, it generally don't have the endoplasmic reticulum. So, it have the more and more space for the transportation of oxygen. Uh, which is uh, it's the it's basic function it is also poorly developed in case of spermatocytes and reticulocytes and there are certain enzymes which is present on the cytoplasmic surface of the endoplasmic reticulum like cytochrome p450 b5 and a dph uh, cytochrome B5 reductase and 5 nucleosidase. These are the specific enzymes which is present on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum and it have in the functioning or during their the protein translocation and synthesis. And in the luminance, uh, luminal side, glucose 6-phosphatase, beta glucondase, peptidase, and nucleoside diphosphates are present, which help during the uh, glycosylation. When we will uh, rupture a cell, this is the cell, when we, and this is showing the endoplasmic reticulum. And when what we will get, when we will rupture the cell we will, and we will isolate the endoplasmic reticulum, we will get some microsomes, uh, which is a part of the uh, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, which once get disintegrated into the microsomes. When these microsomes, when we will centrifuge these microsomes, what we will get, we will get the two bands. One, the band which is a denser is the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the one which is the high, which is lighter band or the uh, less denser in comparison to this one is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. This rough endoplasmic reticulum is denser because it contains ribosome on its surface and which is uh, which contains a large amount of RNA and since this is the denser. So there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum, a smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum. Rough means the one which contains the ribosomes on its surface because this um, uh, endoplasmic reticulum has ribophorin protein which help in the attachment of ribosomes. Uh, the basic function of the endoplasmic reticulum is the protein processing. What happens when the protein gets synthesized, it is packed in a vesicle and it will transport it to the Golgi body. Then in the form of secretory vesicles, it is exported where it is required. Or we can say if it's a secretory vesicles, it will be exported out of the cell or it can uh, fuse with other, uh, other secretory vesicles. So how it happens? Actually, uh, it during protein shorting what happened there can be the uh, synthesis of protein inside the cytosol with the help of free ribosomes or on the endoplasmic reticulum which is having a bond ribosomes so the proteins which is synthesized in the cytosol is generally uh, translocated to nucleus mitochondria chloroplast and peroxisomes but the one which is synthesized on the endoplasmic reticulum on the surface of endoplasmic reticulum it is generally translocated to plasma membrane secretory vesicles 
and lysosomes then how we will recognize the protein which is uh, that how we can say that this protein has to uh, go to the plasma membrane or to the uh, nucleus so actually there are specific signals to the proteins for example i have already discussed in my video when i was discussing about the nucleus that the protein which is to be translocated to the uh, nucleus has some analysis sequence so the analysis sequence means nucleus uh, nucleus localizing signal so the one protein which has the analysis sequence will be transported to the nucleus but there is very specificity in their transportation from the endoplasmic to golgi and from the uh, uh, sorry uh, this is cytoplasmic uh, uh, protein which is get transported to the nucleus but the one which has to cross from the endoplasmic to reticulum to the golgi body and then to the specific site like plasma membrane secretory vesicles and lysosomes also have certain signaling molecules or certain markers which is recognized by the vesicles and get transported to their uh, uh, site so trans, uh, actually translocations uh, translocations of this proteins from the er to the site is the two types is a co translation translocation and other is the post translational translocation because uh, some ribosomes can be free which is not bound to the endoplasmic reticulum what will happen to that it will first synthesize the whole protein and then it will translocate to the endoplasmic reticulum for its proper folding and uh, some quality control mechanisms and then after after the proper assignment of the protein is proper uh, when it get properly converted to its functional form it will be transported uh, to the required place there was scientist david and gunter and gunter who has recognized that the protein which is synthesized in the cytosol or the one which is synthesized on the uh, on the endoplasmic reticulum that protein has certain signaling molecules which she have in the attachment of ribosome to the micro uh, to the endoplasmic reticulum membrane or uh, we can say it guide the uh, a binding of ribosome to the endoplasmic reticulum so that the uh, co translation modification can carry out for that what he has done, they have done they have uh, in uh, synthesized protein in in vitro condition so the one when he synthesized protein in the cytosol then what they uh, analyze that the one which has uh, synthesized in the cytosol have some additional sequences towards the and site or the and terminal and this is known as signal sequences because when the same protein sequences were synthesized in over the microsome then what they get there was a certain uh, sequences toward the and terminal which is not for, uh, found inside the microsome because one it gets synthesized the one which is the required protein this is the length of the required protein when it get internalized inside the membrane then it was found that the this sequence of the protein is somewhat shorter than the one which they have synthesized in the cytosol in in vitro conditions because the signal molecules which were guiding to be translocated inside the microsomes has been removed while uh, the process of the translocation so it was said that the certain molecule certain signaling molecules or certain sequences are there in during uh, towards their and terminals which guide their translocation inside the endoplasmic reticulum and also when they uh, use the protease enzyme for the digestion of the protein which one they have isolated from the cytosol and the one which was inside the microsomes when they uh they treated the both of the protein with the proteasomes what they uh, they found that the one which was inside obviously if it is will be inside the microsome membrane then it will be not possible for the protease enzyme to cross this membrane and digest the protein so the one which were uh, which they have synthesized using the microsomes were protected from the protease enzyme but the one which they have synthesized in the cytosol has undergone Uh, uh have been uh, affected with the by the enzyme protease and degraded so now what about the translocation i have told that there is two types of translocation one is the co translation translocation and other is the post translational what happened during the co translation translocation 
the certain sequences toward the end terminal which is known as SRP or the signal recognizing particles are there which it will recognize the end terminal sequences and it will bind to its receptor which is on the end of uh, translocone which is situated along the translocone then now after that this SRP will be removed and the protein will continue to synthesize and one, it, once it has been recognized by the signal peptidase it will what it will do it will uh, cut out the uh, protein or the desired protein and it will internalize the protein and it will regulate the proper folding with the help of certain chaperons but in the case of post translation modifications the one protein which is completely synthesized in the cytosol where is now have some ch chaperon molecules bond to it so that it will not get, get misfolded and then the signal molecules will be recognized by instead of SRP receptor now here it has a sec 62 and 63 complex where this uh, signal molecules will bound and uh, line by line the chaperon will be removed and protein will be internalized and once uh, when it will interact with the B protein it will again act as a ratchet mechanism to uh, pull out the proteins and it will internalize inside the lumen but if you will see that not all the proteins are in the vesicle forms or the secretory proteins there are certain proteins which is which are the membrane ex, which expressed on the membrane so uh, if you will see the membrane protein then there we will see the different types of proteins the one having the end terminal toward the cytosolic side and, and see on the luminal side of the ER and the one uh, just opposed to this and some uh, proteins undergo a span to uh, of them to um, along them uh, across the membranes uh, and multiple times then how these proteins get to be synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum because till now what we have seen that the proteins uh, which is synthesized on the uh, cytosol or in on the endoplasmic reticulum are uh, get internalized to the er lumen then how these proteins are expressed on the mem transmembrane uh, or the transmembrane protein are expressed with the help of endoplasmic reticulum so let's see what happened when the protein is synthesized instead of being pulled by the help of signal peptidase there are certain strong codons along the proteins which will prevent it further pulling inside the endoplasmic reticulum and what will uh, it do it will signal for the closing of the translocation translocon and the protein will be shifted laterally toward the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum and now the, this was quite simple that the ANS terminal which was synthesized here is the uh, internalized and the C terminal was on the cytoplasmic side. But what if we have to express that there is a protein which has the N terminal to, toward the cytosol and the one of the uh, C terminal toward the ER lumen. On that case what happens we have at seen uh, that uh, uh, there are certain signaling molecules toward the end terminals, but in this case uh, how it is done that signaling molecules is not in the terminal region will be somewhere in the sub terminal region so that the end terminal region suppose this if this will be the signal molecules then what will happen the signal molecules will be uh, um, let me draw with this uh, if this will be translock on then what will happen let me draw first uh, the signal molecules will be somewhere like this and this from here the end terminal will be exposed toward the cytosol side but this uh, signal molecules will not be cut out when it will uh, interact with the peptidase rather it will have the certain stop cordon that it will prevent it from the complete tra uh, completely transfer to the ER lumen and in this way the one which is internalized will have the C terminal toward the AR lumen and the one here will be have the N terminal towards the cytosolic side and similarly the one which has which is uh, span multiple times in the endoplasmic reticulum like uh, something like this and then what happened this case, instead of the single uh, stop cordon it will have the multiple stop cordon and this will help the, in the multiple spanning of the protein across the membrane and it will have a complex transmembrane protein. So this was in my video 
in my upcoming videos i am going to show you how the glycosylation takes place over the endoplasmic reticulum and also i will discuss some of the expected questions in your competitive examinations it can be csi or net get and some set questions also so don't forget to subscribe and share my channels for the updates till then goodbye and have a nice day